Hey, welcome to the Live Chess Presenters Group. We are very glad to have you here. And, uh, well, before we get started, I, uh, I just want to say that this is probably the favorite group of mine that I've ever been in. We're super active. Uh, it's a great group of people. We're always willing to help each other out. And uh, we do a lot to support uh, the chess community and chess.com by, uh, by bringing games from all over the world into, uh, into the chess servers here on chess.com so that uh, our, our members here can enjoy them. So uh, before I get too long-winded, which I'm apt to do, um, let's go ahead and jump in. And I'm going to show you guys the basics of how to relay a game. Um, for our purposes here, we're going to pretend like we're going to relay a game from the North American Open, specifically from Wesley So, But before we get started, let's talk about what you should have available to you before you get going, before you ever start to relay. Um, you'll notice here on my screen that I have two separate windows set up. One of them is uh, has just.com, and then the other one has my other sites that I'm going to perhaps need. Um, I have here a recent article um, regarding the tournament from the North American Open. Um, I have the host website from the North American Open so that I can give that to, to people if they ask for it. I have the FIDE ratings cards, which I, I use to get the names and the titles and the, the federation and the ratings of the players, which will be important. And then I have Chess Bomb, which is where I'm going to relay from, okay? And uh, the last thing that I have is actually a, a notepad. And on that notepad, I have some key information taken down so that I can easily copy and paste it where I, where I need it. So I have the time control because that's a frequent question that uh, you're going to get when you're relaying a game. And it's really easy if you can just simply copy and paste that in there real quick so that uh, so you can answer that question. I also have the host website, um, the recent article, and I also have the link to Chess TV. Uh, sometimes um, chess.com is doing coverage on Chess TV, and, uh, and it's nice to be able to give that link out to people so that we can refer them over there so they can get the live coverage along with watching the game. Um, this last bit I have down here is going to be the board title. And then I have the various names of the, each party on uh, that's going to be in the game. And uh, let's talk about that a little bit because it's uh, somewhat specific. So normally we have the, the, the board title is going to be the name of the chess tournament. And then the round number. And then you're going to have the last name of the two players. So white versus black. And uh, we're trying to be very consistent. So... Um, I believe that the, the format I have here, which is with the dash, the round nine, and then just the last names with no period in the verses is the, uh, the standard approved format. However, if you're co-relaying with someone and they've got a few games and you've got a few games and you notice that they got there first and they didn't quite follow this format exactly, you should follow suit with what they've done so that we remain consistent. And then afterwards, we can address that and talk to that person and get them squared away with what the right, uh, what the right way is. Same thing with the, the individual board titles. So first, we have the, the title of the player, if they have one. So either like GM or IM or WGM or whatever their title is. We have last name, comma, first name. FIDE, FIDE which is their FIDE, going to be their FIDE rating. Notice it's all capitalized. And that's usually their standard FIDE rating. Now, if we're doing a blitz tournament or a rapid tournament, uh, we may put FIDE, and then here we would, might say uh, blitz, if, if we're doing a blitz tournament or a rapid. Uh, we then have their federation, which uh, is encapsulated in parentheses. And then we have what their current score in the tournament is going to be. And uh, so and it's usually we would do... Uh, point zero, even if they don't have um, any any point five, like this one's point five, because you got a draw. So even if they don't have any draws yet, or if they had two draws, so it equals one, we still put that dot in there. So I like to have all of this up front, ready to go before we get started. Um, so since I have this, let's uh, let's hop over to chess.com and we're going to build uh, an analysis board. So the first thing you need to do is go into the live chess servers which we just clicked on play, went to live chess. And then, yes, we want to play live chess. Take a second to load up. And you notice right here, you have new game tournaments and top game. Um, I You just click here and go down to analysis, which is going to 
uh, and then hit start game, it's going to bring up an analysis board. So this is where this little thing comes in handy because we're just going to delete out, well, we're going to try to delete out this thing that says analysis board. And we're going to replace that with our board title. So we'll just copy that in there. And then for the white player, we're just going to copy this into here. And then for the black player, we're going to repeat the same process and paste and then just start analysis board. And so we've got this analysis board here and I'm going to I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for a second. So notice um, the one key thing that you need to do from here in order to be able to make the game so that other people can see it is under settings. You'll have this setting that now says make public. OK, so you have all these other things. Um, it's going to be pretty rare that you would ever use any of these. And uh, you're probably going to want specific instructions from from one of the admins in the group before you would use uh, any of these other any of these other buttons. But you're just going to click make public and that will make the board available to everybody. And once you've done that, you'll see it listed here under the events uh, highlighted just like uh, just like the top player games are. I'm not actually going to do that right now because uh, I don't want people showing up to this game that I'm not actually uh, not actually do anything with right now. Um, so once we have here, um, once you have it open and you have it made public, you're going to want to copy in here and let them know what the time control is, uh, who's going to play, what round it is. It's probably a good idea to just give them some basic information about the game. And uh, so once you have your board set up here, then you're going to come over to the, the site that you're going to relay from, which I uh, am going to use Chess Bomb for this, uh, for this instance. There's also several other websites that we like to use. I'll type a few of them out here so you can see them. There's chess24.com. There is chessdom.com. And um, so those are the three sort of main ones that I use. There definitely are others, uh, as well as using the, the host websites, because often those uh, publish the games as well. So, but we're gonna use ChessBomb. So, when you first go to Chess Bomb, you get a, le a list of the different tournaments. And we're going to scroll down to the 24th North American Open. And then we're going to, it's a nice advertisement, right? Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to go over here to the rounds. Chess Bomb always divides it into the, into the various rounds. We're doing round nine, and we're going to do uh, Wesley Sup. So that's going to bring the board up here. It's going to put it in the final position. Now, if you have your board all set up, which it's a good idea to try to have your board set up at least 15, 20 minutes in advance, there'll be no moves here in the this board will match this board. And then as you watch the game on chess bomb, uh, a, a move gets made. And so you make the move and then another move is made. And so you're just going back and forth, just making the moves. Now, sometimes the moves get made back and forth really, really quickly. And uh, when that happens, it's a good idea if you try to wait a little bit to allow the players inside to um, uh, to have a chance to talk about the position and to, and just think about it. And if there's not a lot of chat going on, maybe you want to hop in and say, "Hey, what do you think the best move here should be?" or something something like that to try to engage engage the audience. Uh, another key thing that you're going to get asked all the time that you should be prepared to answer is how much time do the players have left? Uh, a lot of players are used to, when they're playing on chess.com, seeing the time remaining before, below and above the board. When you're analyzing a board, that, that isn't there. But um, Chess Bomb does have it. You'll see it listed under each player right here. So occasionally I will just type in here, it would be like, so has 150, 24, and then we'll do, uh, at Julian? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, paste has 20037. We'll do like that. Um, we frequently get asked for time control, so I'll just put in here, like, I'll just paste this in here a few times throughout the match, although I just copied over my time control thing instead of, uh, uh, instead of what I intended to do. That happens sometimes. Um, and so, yeah, you'll just uh, and sit back, enjoy the game, and uh, trying to go through the just go through the game, okay? And so, once you've reached the end of the game and you get a uh, and you get a result, so what we're going to do at that point is you'll go back 
into the settings here and um, you'll edit the title. Okay, so in this one, Wesley So One. So you put another dash and go So Win One Dash Zero. Okay, and then <clears throat> so here uh, you would adjust the scoring to, to make the, the score the correct, and then this says Dash Wins One, and then for Batchum or however you say his name, you'll put Loses. Um, zero, and then say OK, and notice that the, it changes the uh, the board title up here changes, and the the headings for each player changes as well. Um, once you once the game is completed, you'll want to leave the board up for a few hours so that players can continue to to check it out and come back in. Uh, I usually like to come back in and check on the chat and see if anyone said anything interesting or maybe throw my own thing in there as well. Generally, two hours is a good rule, um, but, you know, I often leave it up for much, much longer than that. But uh, but anyhow, um, that's really the basics. It's really not that difficult, and uh, it's quite enjoyable. It's a great way to interact with the games and uh, and get to, to enjoy it as well. So uh, I hope that you guys uh, appreciate this, and uh, we're glad to have you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.